Hi, I'm Joseph Calhoun and welcome to the Oxford Legacy Special. I'm here with Christopher Ward and Paul Levitt Cooper from Five Lakes Silver Band. Thanks for coming on the show. No problem. I'm super excited to talk about our uh, topic today. Christopher, could you give me a little background about you? You are the uh, director and conductor of the band. Yeah. Uh, how did that come to fruition? Um, I, I was born in England. Uh, my parents moved over in 1980. I grew up in New York in a musical family. Uh, my father was a music director for the Salvation Army in New York uh, and played in a lot of groups. And so I grew up, music was in the home. Uh, it was what I wanted to do. And so I worked in New York City for a while. Um, playing and uh, playing trumpet and cornet in different bands and groups and, and conducting a bit. And then we had a job opportunity in Michigan popped up in 2018. So my wife and I and our children moved out. We live in West Bloomfield now. And I uh, linked up with the band, with Five Lakes Silver Band. As soon as I got here, I got an email from wow. the personnel manager and said, hey, someone gave me a tip that you're moving here. Would you like to play with us? We've got a big uh, North American championship competition coming up. So I played with the band and then stayed in over the next season. Um, and then the current, uh, the, the director at the time uh, was moving away. And so they'd asked me if I would take, take over the group. Oh, wow. So that's kind of the quick version of, uh, that sounds serendipitous. Man. Yeah. It sounds like it was meant to be, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's been a great, um, pairing. Nice. Since 2019. Yeah. Paul, you're the composer in residence. Yeah. How, how did that, how did you fall into that one? Um, well, Chris and I met around 30 years ago. And oh, I, wow. And it's hard to tell we look so young. <laughs> um, yeah, we were both working at, uh, for the Salvation Army at a fam famous music camp called the Star Lake Music Camp. So wow. I was the percussion tutor. I'm a percussionist originally. And uh, Chris was staff there and uh, we just hit it, hit it off. It was great. So. Back home, I started life as a teacher, but then moved into professional musician and uh, became the composer in residence for a TV company. And so I write music for brass bands, wind bands, all, all different ensembles and, and formats. Uh, so we have a very famous brass band in England called the Black Dyke Band. And uh, I became, I was principal percussionist and then became their composer in residence. And so the composing's really taken off. Um, and We've, uh, we've been over a few times now you know, doing some work with the band and Chris came up with the idea of, you know, let's get you involved more with the band and get some new music out there. And uh, we'll create the uh, Composer and Association post. And, uh, and so here we are today. Wow. And I'm not familiar with it. Uh, and I'm sure some people in the audience might not be as well. What is a Composer in Residence? So basically, I'm at his beck and call. <laughs> <laughs> Um, nice. But uh, what we decided to do um, is it's, it's, it's just an alliance between myself and the band uh, and I get to compose music for the band so when we look at future projects he'll, you know, whether it's a, a recording or whether it's a, a contest or a concert, Chris will say, we're working towards this, we'd like to, to have a piece for this programme, you know, we'd, we'd like to commission you to do this piece. And uh, that's, that's led us to this first commission that we're talking about this weekend. Right, which is the, uh, it's called an Oxford Legacy. Yeah. Um, I don't want to jump right into that yet, um, but that's definitely why we're here and, and the impetus of the show. Um, but what, on the 23rd of um, November, which is this Saturday, um, you're defending your title as Brass, Open Brass Band Champion, U.S. Open Brass Band Championship, and it mm -hmm. third, third title? Yeah, yeah, we've possibly? won that twice in a row, 22 and 23. So we're hoping to defend that well. Um, at, it's an entertainment contest, the US Open. Um, so meaning every band picks their own program. They pick the music, uh, 25 minute programs each. Um, as opposed to other competitions in the brass band world where you have a set work that every band has to play, the same piece throughout oh, the day. Wow. So for your, for your audience, it's a little more... Monotonous, um, right? Yeah. yeah, there's more variety and, you know, in the entertainment contest because every band will pick their own program. They'll, some bands will do a theme. Um, they'll pick pieces that uh, work to the strengths of their band and that. So we've got nine bands uh, at Clarkson High School on Saturday starting at 9.30 in the morning um, uh, performing and they've all got their own program. So there's really something for everybody. It's a real variety of music. That sounds that like a good time. 
What's your guys' theme today? Or the Saturday? So, so our theme for Five Lake Silver Band is, it's a Michigan theme, so our, the, the name of our program is Pure Michigan. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Nice. And uh, sounds like a good time. Um, and you're also performing Sunday as well. Is that also at Clarkston High School? So Sunday is the, the South, uh, Southeast Michigan uh, Wind Ensemble. Um, they're sort of in partnership with our band on this commission of an Oxford legacy. So they have a concert Sunday afternoon also at Clarkston High School and uh, they've invited me to conduct them in the world premiere of an Oxford legacy for wind band on Sunday afternoon. Wow. So you get two world premieres in one weekend, the brass band on Saturday and the wind band on Sunday. That sounds like an eventful weekend. Yeah. That's uh, sounds like a good time. And uh, and what's the time uh, on Sunday? Uh, you said nine thirty to roughly seven p.m. on Saturday. What's the time? Yeah, it's a full day Saturday. Um, Sunday, I believe, is a three o'clock concert. Okay, so not as long, not a, not as long day there. No, no, and it's just the one group. Nice playing there. Playing oh, okay, concert, so not so. not nine. There's only one. Okay, about an hour, yeah. hour and a half or so of concert. Yeah. The, the great thing about the contest on Saturday is there's a variety of music and there's breaks in between, so guys mm -hmm. can go in, watch the performance, enjoy that, come out, get a coffee, a sandwich or something. Mm -hmm. and, but it's 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 a really great day. There's there's lots going on all day. <clears throat> can we talk a little bit about uh, Five Lake Silver Band and, sure. and how long have, have have they been rolling? So the band um, was founded in 2006 and uh, kicked off in about 2007. Um, really is sort of a community brass band playing concerts in and around the area in Detroit. Um, and then got into competing. Uh, so they do their concerts, but they'd also work towards various competitions. Um, North American Brass Band Championships. There was uh, one in Canada, the Hannaford Cup, that they went and won a couple times. Um, wow. And then in recent years, uh, the Dublin Festival of Brass down in Dublin, Ohio is one that the band's been to a number of times. And the US Open Brass Band Championships, uh, the last few years have been hosted in Michigan. That moves around from time to time. So, oh, wow. Um, yeah, so that, that's a bit about uh, the band's history. The folks in the band come from all around Michigan really now. We've got some people that drive two and a half hours to rehearsal every week. Oh wow, that's dedication yeah. there. Man. Yeah, and it's all volunteer as well. So, mm. yeah. But it's a great group. Uh, we've got incredible people, incredible work ethic. Um, there's a real drive in the band to want to be the best they can be. And well, it sounds like you guys you know, are doing pretty good, right? Uh, it's quite a few it's been going already. well. Yeah. yeah, it's been going well. We've had a good few years. Obviously, uh, coming out of COVID, we weren't allowed to do any anything really. I mean, competitions weren't happening and all that. So they all kicked up again in 2022. Um, and we've been very fortunate the last few years and, and quite successful in, in those competitions. We've won a number of championships at the US Open, the Dublin Festival of Brass. And in 2023, we won the North American Championships. So it's been, nice. it's been great. It sounds like an eventful uh, couple of years for you guys. Um, yeah. We're going to take a small break. And we'll be right back and we'll talk a little bit more about the, uh, a very special tribute. Last week, Brandon met a girl on a dating app. One day after work, he finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being too pushy? Maybe it was too... Hey, sorry I didn't respond. I was driving. I would love to go on a date. How does tonight sound? Brandon tried to play it cool, but inside he knew. A girl so smart, so responsible. She must be a keeper. Hey, welcome back. I'm here with uh, Christopher Ward and uh, Paul Lovett Cooper. Um, and we're talking about their performance this Saturday at the Clarkston High School. Um, could you tell me a little bit about the Pure Michigan program that you uh, briefly touched on in the first segment? Sure. Um, so we wanted to do something that uh, really hits at home. <clears throat> so our, our program uh, really has a wide range of styles and, and emotions in, in, uh, involved. And so we're starting out with a, a brand new piece. We've got three new commissions on this program. Uh, Resurgit uh, Chinaribus, which is a uh, Latin phrase on the Detroit flag. That uh, means we will rise from the ashes, which is quite fitting 
for the story of Detroit. Yeah, Phoenix, um, right? Yeah. And so that's written by Joel Collier, who's a friend of mine. Uh, we sort of grew up together in Salvation Army music programs and things. And um, and then we're going into uh, Michigan's own Stevie Wonder. Yeah. Uh, one of his, uh, You Are the Sunshine of My Life, which Great is song. written as a double trio uh, for three cornets and three trombones. Um, and yeah. that'll be a really nice uh, reflective moment. Um, and then we commissioned uh, Philip Harper who's a conductor and arranger of the, the Cory Band over in Wales, um, to, to do an arrangement of uh, a Motown classic. So we chose the four tops, Bernadette. All right. So that's going to be in the program. So that will get everyone moving around mm -hmm. and Have a little fun. really enjoying Loosen themselves uh, with some good old Motown. Um, and then we're going to finish our program with uh, the brand new work that our new composer residence has written for us, uh, An Oxford Legacy, which is the big major work of our program. And that's, uh, I, I got to hear a little snippet of it, and man, it sounded very powerful. I, it gave me, like I said, uh, I had a vision of like flowers and, 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 and breeze blowing them. Um, Mike Flickinger. Mm. Yeah, uh, good old Kind of got this ball rolling, right? Can, yeah. we, can we give the audience a little background on that? Yeah. Well, Mike's the soprano player with Chris's band. Uh, he's a great character. Um, when we were throwing around ideas, last year mm -hmm. um, at a meeting, um, talking about the first sort of major commission uh, that I could do for the band as, as the composer in residence. And Mike highlighted uh, the tragedy that happened at the school. Um, and uh, I mean, we were all in tears, mm. uh, just talking about everything. We're, we're all parents, um, we've all got kids who are at school, and it, it was such a powerful uh, moment, and mm. we've said, you know, what about uh, coming up with a piece of music to celebrate the lives of the children who were lost um, in the tragedy? So it's, um, but obviously something like this, you've, you, you know, it's a big project and we want to make sure that everyone was, was okay with this. So uh, it, was, it was Mike and his, his wife to initially got in touch with the families mm -hmm. to, to see if they were okay if we could do a musical tribute to the children who passed away. And then, you know, Chris, you want to take over? Sure. Yeah, like, like Paul said, uh, Mike and Abby Flickinger really um, have played a huge role in this coming to fruition. You know, they've been the contact with the families. And, and we just, we really, it was important to us to get their, the family's blessing each step of the way. Are you okay with this? This is what we'd like to do. And, and to let them know that the band's not looking to gain anything monetarily out of this. Um, we just raised some money with a consortium of bands and donors in the area to pay for the commission and to get Paul over here, to be here for the world nice. premiere and you know, to maybe meet the families on Saturday. Um, so, And they had input on, on that. They, so they, they, were, they, they had a partnership in that. Mm -hmm. How was that process? I mean, I'm, I'm sure that's probably pretty tough. Yeah, well, as I said, I mean, Mike and Abby have been the contacts, um, so I'll throw some ideas at them. Paul and I will chat quite regularly about ideas for the piece and things, and we're going to have some uh, media stuff on the screen uh, while that's happening as well, some, some images and things. Nice little tribute um, video then? Yeah. While you guys are performing the piece, and this is the world premiere, yes. right? This will go along with it, yeah. Brass on Saturday, Win Ensemble on Sunday, yeah. so, man... Uh, Sounds like an amazing event. Now, the Saturday performance is, is, is paid. Uh, you had to pay to come in, correct? And I heard that there was uh, wristbands available mm -hmm. for, uh, for people that uh, might not be able to afford it or wanted to come. And, yeah, and we've, we've made a, uh, an amount of wristbands available at um, Sick Pizza and at Gravcap Brewery. So anyone in Oxford uh, that would like to go hear, that, hear our performance, and we're on at 445. Um, but if they want to come for the afternoon and hear some of the other bands, that's fine. Yeah, come and see the whole yeah, show, right? Because it's, a, it's got, a day event. Yep. Uh, so there's wristbands available uh, at both those locations to go pick up, and that's free of charge. We wanted to provide as much as we can for the community because uh, obviously the families are the ones. This is their, this is life for them daily. Now. Every day. They face yeah. this every day they wake up, those mm. four families. And, and as Paul said, as parents, like we just, you try to wrap your head around that and you can't yeah, you fathom can't. you can't even man what I'm they go too, through so. mm. but but the community as a whole have it shakes a community you know and it doesn't just go away so 
as a band, we thought it was important, um, and we got permission from the U.S. Open, uh, and they were totally on board with that to provide um, basically tickets, but wristbands for, nice. for the folks from the Oxford community to come in and, and not have to pay to be there. That's beautiful. That's yeah. a beautiful thing that they did. Um, uh, and now I know you guys haven't performed this um, to a, a large crowd, um, but you've obviously rehearsed it and, mm -hmm. and, and done it. When you're when you're directing that, uh, what what's what is going on inside? I'm sure it's quite emotional for yeah. you. Yeah, it is. Um, I mean, obviously, there's the the nitty gritty of putting a piece of music together and uh, sort of stripping it down and rehearsing parts and putting it together and, and really making the music come to life off the page. Um, and that's something I really enjoy doing. Uh, but this has been quite an emotional journey mm. um, with many folks in the band, you know, knowing people in the community. Um, I work with somebody who we were in a meeting when the, the shooting happened and uh, she got a text on her phone. Her daughter was a, a senior at Oxford at High School. At the high school. Mm. And she was on, hiding under a desk, said the shooting's happening. I don't know what's gonna happen. Oh and my God. The look on my coworker, my friend's face, uh, and we just froze. And she told us quickly what was happening, and then she ran out the door and called her husband, get over to the school, I'm already there, you know, that kind wow. of, and it was just a frenzy of, and, and then all the emotions go through your mind, like, oh my gosh, I wanna check on my kids in their school, you know? Yeah, and it's just, just one of those things. Or phone call. You know, but like I said, the, all those things, you know, you, that go through your mind is just, you know, Anytime something like that happens, but then to try and wrap your head around what the actual families are going through, or people that were in the school at the time that are still dealing with right. that, you know, uh, is just They're incredible. All victims. Everyone so there. as yeah, as you're preparing the piece, and we've talked about it as a band, you know, this is obviously going to be quite emotional for the band, and my job is to try and draw on the emotion of the players to to pull out an incredible moment and performance uh, of this music that Paul's written and it's a great piece, but to really deliver that, you know, for those families on Saturday and for the community, you know, and that's just a small part that we, you know, we want to play. In, yeah, it's a, in a bigger picture, but man, what a what a powerful and um, something that'll live on forever, you, sure. know, you know, and what a tribute. Um, we're gonna take a small break. Uh, we'll be right back. Uh, thanks for watching. When a crisis hits, close to home and across the globe, nonprofits are on the front lines, ready to serve. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. The demand for charitable services has skyrocketed, and nonprofits are rising to meet the needs. Healing, nurturing, rescuing, honoring, protecting. Caring, inspiring. The work of philanthropic organizations of all sizes across all missions has never been more important. And it's donors and volunteers like you who make all this possible. Thank you. Together, we change the world. The Nonprofit Alliance. Military families often sacrifice precious time away from loved ones while serving our country. And for those with children, the separation can be especially difficult. We were worried that with him leaving, that she would lose those connections with her dad. Some of life's best moments happen between parents, children, and the pages of a good book. United Through Reading provides that connection. You can watch your mom or dad read a book to you, and it almost feels like they're really there. We ensure they remain a consistent, meaningful part of their children's lives, no matter the distance. Just seeing Jacob recognize Daddy again after a long time just melted my heart. And now, as we're facing greater isolation from our loved ones, United Through Reading is also available to veterans. Learn more about United Through Reading and download our free secure app at unitedthroughreading.org. 
All right, welcome back. I'm here with uh, Christopher Ward and Paul Lovett Cooper um, from Five Lakes Silver Band, and we've been talking about uh, and, and Oxford Legacy, um, and it's such a powerful uh, show we're doing, and, 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 and like, I'm emotional thinking about it's stirring up all that emotions. I mean, we're coming up on a three-year anniversary. Um, Paul, could you tell me a little bit about, you wrote this piece, and man, how, you know, tell me the story behind it. I want to know, like, because like I said, I've, I've had a chance to hear just a little bit of it. Let me know, like, the process. Well, for all the different projects I've worked on, whether it's been TV shows, whether it's been concert works, military band pieces, or, you know, even the march band stuff over here I've done, you, it, there's a purpose and you, there's a certain style of music that you've got to write for. Um, so when we talked about this, we, we wanted it to be a piece that uh, the band could use, uh, not just in the contest, but as a, as a concert work. And we wanted to create a piece of music that would be a legacy for obviously the memory of the, the children and for the families. Um, so it's, initially it was really tough. You know, we, we sat down with Mike Flick and Joe with Chris and we were talking about, you know, do we want a short opener piece? Do we want a fanfare piece? Do we want a, a piece that's a re reflective piece? Uh, you know, that's slow uh, in memory. Um, and then we came up with the idea of, of a finale and a piece to celebrate their lives. Because um, Wonderful. even though they've been ended short, they had, uh, they had lived. And just some of the images that uh, we're going to be showing on, on the stage of the kids, it, it just shows what amazing kids they are. And uh, the fact that they, ha even though it's short, they, they, they lived uh, a good life. So we thought a big piece. Um, so it's, a, it's around about eight or nine minutes long. It's a concert finale. So um, I've sort of composed it in sections. So the opening section I composed in a, in a kind of uh, school marching band style. So the band starts up and you get this feeling of, you know, you're at the school, marching band, it's, you get that feel. Camaraderie, right? Yeah, and a lot of excitement. You, you know what the, the bands are like over mm -hmm. here. So, um, so, yeah, that, we've got some uh, section to show off some of the soloists in, in the ensemble as well. Uh, so they come out to the front, some technical playing, and then uh, the piece, um, slows down to our reflective section and uh, and that was the melody I played you earlier so uh, it took a long while I wanted to to create a, a melody that is just a, a beautiful melody that you could just sit back and listen to and you know for the for the families when they're there hopefully you know the, we've got the images as well but hopefully they can use that as a time of reflection so as they hear the melody that's played by the, the lone solo cornet out the front, they, uh, wow. they have an opportunity to sort of reflect uh, and, and just reminisce about the, the lives of, of their loved ones. And then as it, because it's a, a, a big finale piece, I've taken that melody and we, we then go into our finale section where we bring back some of the marching band excitement from the opening and then we mix that together with the beautiful melody. Oh, wow. So we have a big, glorious Disney style sort of ending. Um, so it's a real celebration of the lives of, of the kids. So, so that, that was the whole concept and it, it took some doing. <laughs> How long? How long have you been working on this? Several months. On, on a piece like that, I could, um, I, anything between sort of three and six weeks, I could work on it. Uh, but this was several months, you wow. know, there's lots of to and fro in, you know, yeah. and I'm saying, is this appropriate? Is this, you know, how, how do you think about this? And we sent some stuff over, the, the initial ideas, you know, some of it worked, some of it didn't. So it was a real, sort of had a, an organic uh, compositional mm -hmm. effect. And it was great because I had the input from, the, from Chris and the players as well. And yeah, that works, that doesn't. Because with this, it's got to be right. Mm -hmm. It's got to be right. And it's got to have the emotional impact and the musicality, so it just sounds like a glorious piece of music, something fitting for the memories of those kids. Mm -hmm. Wow. And uh, what kind of emotions did that stir up and trigger within you? <laughs> uh, I've got to be careful, <laughs> I'll get upset. When we were talking about it, because I've got uh, three kids, a uh, son and two gorgeous daughters. My son's gorgeous as well. <laughs> he doesn't like me saying that because he's a teenager. <laughs> but. Um, you know, I just put my heart and soul into it and just thinking about, 
you know the emotions. I, I cannot comprehend what those families have gone through. And, you know, you just yeah. don't know yourself if you, if you encounter that loss yourself. So I'm getting emotional now thinking about mm -hmm. it. So yeah. I, I put my heart and soul into it. So I really hope I've done the families proud mm -hmm. at the weekend. I'm sure you have. And while you guys have been uh, rehearsing this, and you're, you're, you know, you're conducting, right? Sure. And you're listening to your music being performed by 30 plus people. What kind of emotions are you seeing on, on, on the faces of the band members? It's, uh, it's certainly there. Um, and it, there's a fine line, because when you're playing particularly brass instruments, you need your embouchure formed and you're using your air and things like that. And so to be able to play at a high level you've got to try to keep your emotions in check. Um, so it's been a real challenge uh, for us. Um, and for me as a conductor, I conduct on emotion anyway. Mm. I'm a very emotional person in front of the band and so I'm always trying to draw on emotions from the band. This one's been tricky just to find the right balance there because the emotion will be there without a doubt. How could it not, you know? Yeah. Um, but, and I know when we're done, when we finish, there'll be a lot of emotion after, uh, oh, yeah, because I know they'll be holding it back, mm -hmm. you know, to try and, I, and you know, wow. So it's 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 been an incredible uh, privilege, you know, and real humbling too to work on something like this. To you know that we hope will have a great impact on people and just give them a moment to um, yeah reflect, right, but it's also a resonating effect, I'm you know sure. to. Um, to feel some sort of joy and excitement that there's their kids are being celebrated. We're celebrating their, um, their life. And that's what we want when we end the piece. It's a real big celebration of their lives and the legacy that they've left behind. Wow. And uh, that's just amazing. I, and I'm glad that uh, we, we have somebody coming to cover the event. Um, so we'll have it. You've documented. And, uh, we can watch in the future, and uh, I'm sure there's going to be, you know, a standing ovation. You know what I mean? Like I just, I already know. Like I've had just a listen, a little snippet, and it was, it was very powerful what I heard, and uh, you know, the, all the emotions in that room are going to be uh, probably off the charts. Um, and I don't want to minimize that. I want to swing into um, and change course just a little bit um, and talk more about uh, Five Lake Silver Band. Um, because I know that, uh, like you said, you guys, a lot of people are traveling far and wide and, and, and giving their all and you know, donating their time. Is there a way that people can reach out and make donations? Is there, you know, contribute to the band and moving forward? Um, yeah, I mean, there's always that. And as I said before, like with this project, we're not looking to profit no, off right. of this. And I, and I just want to make sure that's clear because that, that's something we were very serious about from the beginning. Um, we just released a new album. Um, that's out there and we love to get our music out to people um, and so that's available in, in CDs at our concerts and things you can find uh, the upcoming schedule on our website fivelakesilverband.com nice um, that's an easy way okay. we're also on Facebook and Instagram and things like that for those that do that social media stuff how can um, we find the album? the album uh, is available uh, the Spotify? CDs are available at concerts. We okay. still get people asking for CDs. Love and any day now, it'll be out on Spotify, Apple Music, nice. uh, Amazon, and So all YouTube the streaming music. platforms. Good, yep. good. So and you get tangible. There. Yes. That's, I'm a tangible yep. person. Yeah. I love tangible. So, yeah. And, you know, and we, you know, we take regular donations at the concerts and things. Obviously, it's a volunteer group. And we do a lot with our competitions and concerts and, and all that. So we do rely on that. But, but yeah, I mean, the... Um, we're just really excited, and I, like I said, we feel very privileged to be able to do this, uh, and that this all the the initial conversations, you know, and just mm -hmm. spitballing ideas. Well, How I'm, can I'm, we do yeah. something? You know, wow. what can we do, and that kind of thing. That it's all come to this point now, and we're you know we're rehearsing each of the next three nights. Uh, they're working hard this week, but we really want to deliver our very best. We always do. But this is extra special mm -hmm. for us, and it's personal for the band, and we really want to do do it justice on Saturday for for the community and for the families. Well, awesome! Thanks, fellas. I I'm truly honored to have this interview with you guys, and uh, you know, hopefully, you know, get some people to come and, and watch the show. And obviously, uh, what a powerful 
um, event this is going to be. Thank you yeah. for being Thank on you the very show. Much. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thanks for watching, everybody. Um, stay tuned, Oxford TV, and uh, have a great night.